Hi everybody, it's Jeanette. I'm coming back. This time I'm trying to do a new series of retail news. What's in the news for retail? Um, this series is hopefully going to be great and wonderful or I don't know. <laughs> we'll find, we'll see. But we'll bring some good news. If you have any news to report, uh, you can leave it down below um, in the comments section just to let me know and we'll get going uh today's news is all about fashion and clothing and where it's headed to and all kinds of great stuff so stay tuned and don't forget to like hit that like button and subscribe uh, first thing that i want to show you guys is this uh, post that i found on facebook and this is a post um, I don't want to give out any names or anything, but um, they mentioned how they finally got all of the measurements uh, right for people to see, you know, so they can stop complaining and asking questions. So I just thought it was a little funny and get the humor out of the way. <laughs> this article I want to talk about talks about the art of resale, how to score hundreds by reselling stuff. And we'll just go read through it really quick. Target Stanley Valentine's Cup, Taylor Swift concert tickets, and most recently Trader Joe's tote bags. These are all viral items that savvy resellers scoop up and resold for profit. Viral products can go from shelf to sold out sensation overnight. And understanding the in intertechies of reselling can be the key to unlocking significant profit potential, explained Adron, Adron Rich, GM, and product led at seller snap. But there's a risk, and being caught off guard can leave you with a surplus of inventory and no way to offload it, which is so true because once you start buying all the retail arbitrage things off the shelf then a flood market comes in because everybody's doing it and then it's hard to unload your item with getting any kind of profit from it so the first thing they um, talk about is know what type of products go viral from a broader perspective products that often go viral usually include encapsulates the significance or severe a unique need like the fidget spinners or viral app apparel like ugly Christmas sweaters um, and Austin basically blah, blah, blah. these items were initially sold for a few dollars but were then resold at five to 10 times their initial price due to extraordinary demand surged by both viral social media attention. Excuse me. Um, next thing they um, talk about, uh, be aware and ready to jump on a new trending opportunity. Miller explained the reselling a viral item means you have to be able to prom promptly identify trends and put supply chain operations into, into place quickly. It's a case of overhead optimization for inventory management, a robust fulfillment strategy to ensure prompt delivery, along with flexible advertising campaigns to tap into the surge of demand. But remember, the hype around viral products can be infamous, hence timing is of the essence. Really, it, it is. And then um, the, re the rest of the stuff I kind of take into consideration for, like, even if you are reselling um, anything, you kind of just want to just go through you kind of want to do these basic things with everything that you try to resell. 
um, when I read it, that's how I felt about the pro about the um, article. So, uh, avoid price gouging. If you have dreams of finding a product that people will pay way above retail for and making a tiny profit on Amazon or other marketplaces, trend carefully. Third-party marketplaces like Amazon penalize sellers for price gouging. If your price is too high, expect to be hit with a pricing violation. Be realistic about your margins. And if you are not sure if there's a profitable enough margin, it is probably that the viral product is not an opportunity after all. Don't be dis distracted by shiny new toys. <laughs> That's me a lot of times. <laughs> Forcing solely on viral products to resell is probably not the best strategy if you're planning for longevity as a reseller. The best products for resellers are the ones that can be resold again and again and again. Choose products that can be replenished in order to maintain higher levels of inventory over longer times. Building momentum this way will help you grow and stay afloat. So I take that like into really good consideration because if you're gonna have to do that with your reselling business. You're gonna have to like keep replenishing and replenish with good products that are gonna resell, not with ones that just sit on the shelves for years and years or that um, has a high, high, um, not sell through rate. Well, I guess a low sell through rate versus a high sell through rate. Uh, find a good pricing strategy. Rich said that maybe the most important step is to find and implement a good pricing strategy. Repricers automate this function and are key to staying competitive. Any product can, could be a good seller but market factors affect velocity. If you do not have a good repricer, you don't stand a chance. I think that goes for like even products. Like if you do not have a good product, you're not gonna really stand a chance or you know, if to sell it for the price that you want, you have to go by what the market is um, showing. Realize that profit margins are often higher, but can be risky. Miller said that profit margins are often higher when reselling viral products compared to regular items. This is due to the philology of security and immediacy. I'm sorry, I'm really bad with words sometimes. <laughs> which allows for premium pricing, leading to gross margins upward of 50 to 60%. Regular products, on the other hand, often sit in the 20 to 30% gross margin range. However, even though there's a potential for doubling or even tripling your profit margin, Miller said that selling viral products is not all shine, sunshines and rainbows. Neither is reselling. <laughs> the rapid influx of competition with viral products can lead to saturation quickly and the in interest of consumers can wane at the drop of a hat. So although the higher return potential is attractive, it's crucial to diversify and not completely rely on viral product resale. Good, um, compliment, not compliment, good, um, good outtake. <laughs> Takeaway, having navigated the e-commerce landscape and seeing such scenarios unfold, I can say that while fulfilling the demand for viral products can be profitable, the robustness of your overall business model coupled with an effective fulfillment strategy 
will be a surefire way to ensure sustainability and longevity in the marketplace. I think that this article, you can get a lot of takeaways from it, just reselling any day products or if you are gonna do retail arbitrage. But I think if you're gonna do retail arbitrage, you need to have something on top of it to maintain um, your reselling business. So you might wanna do the garage sales or thrift stores or whatever, you know, on top of retail arbitrage. But that's just me and opinion. You can have your own opinion. <laughs> uh, and then speaking of um, reselling, the next thing I wanted to show was uh, the U.S. secondhand market project projected to reach $73 billion by 2028, reportedly. This comes from a thread up. Um, Look, I, th I think ThreadUp did, uh, what do they call it? They did an overall look and like their their um, performances are like skyrocketing. Um, projection, yeah, that's what it says. Okay, so Thread ThreadUp's current projections are in line with the company's 2022 report, which predicted the U.S. secondhand market would reach a 70 billion variation by 2027. The re new report now puts the figure at 69 billion. Wow. <laughs> the report also predicts that online resale will more than double in the next five years, growing at a compound annual rate of 17% to reach 40 million by 2028. If you are now starting in the real sale business, stick with it. Stick with it. I think it's going to pay off for all of us because reselling is, it is, it's starting to really skyrocket. It, sometimes you don't see it and like you have all these, um, what are they called? You have all these, um, Things that people say, you know, like summer slow down and fourth quarter is the busiest. And, you know, I think it all depends on what you're selling. Uh, you could be selling things that you that any person needs every day. So you don't know. I don't know. The global secondhand apparel market continues to Bergen, a testament to the intestinic value shoppers find in the secondhand experience and proof of the sec sensimic shift towards a more circular fashion e ecom ecom ecosystem. Ugh, I cannot speak today. In-house resale is a trend to watch for brands as well. The report found that nine, 39 brands launched resale programs in 2023 which i don't know if this is gonna be taking a toll on us resellers because you know with the whole vero system and ebay are they gonna vero us for reselling their products because they can because they're reselling it now you know i don't know it it's just a thought um including h and m j crew American Eagle, Tom's, and Kate Spade. The total number of brands with resale programs is now 163, up from five in two, 2019 per the data. Based on survey of the top 50 fashion brands in the U.S., 74% of exec executives at brands that don't have resale programs are considering or planning to create ones according to the report. I don't know you guys, this might be trouble. Um, of the approximately 55,000 brands on ThreadUp, the top five brands for resale in 2023 were Lula Moon, um, Patagonia, Burari, Reformation and free people. 
I knew of three of them. <laughs> I don't know the the these two. I don't know what they are, but hey, if I find them, now I know. <laughs> Both Lula Moon and Free People also made the top five in 2022. Yeah, they did. Czar Johnny Was, Zine Apothecary and Skims rounded out the top ten in 2023. There, there's all, or not all, but that's a lot of brands that you can look out for in thrift stores or um, even at due to re retail arbitrage with um, great brands for reselling. With more than half of all consumer shopping for secondhand apparel last year, it's evident that resale is now firmly embedded in the fashion landscape. The report also found that 55% of consumers said they plan to spend more on secondhand apparel if the economy doesn't improve. Exactly the reason why you need to be reselling. Huh. And 2023 was, if 2023 was a good year for the secondhand market as a whole, it was also a strong one for Thread Up. Earlier this month, Thread Up reported quarter four revenue of 81.4 million. Can I own Thread Up? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Up 40, 14% year over year and full fiscal 2023 revenue of 322 million, up 12% from 2022. The company expects to see full fiscal year 2024 revenue in the range of 340 million to 350 million per their March earnings report, increasing Scott, ah, consignment sales and expanding their resale as a service business helped thread up narrow their losses in 2023. Hmm, increasing consignment sales. I wonder if that means from them buying more to, or not really buying more. What do they do? What, um, I think they they put it up on their website and then they sell it and when, once they sell it then you get the profit from it that must that i think i know that's what consignment means but i bet that's that must have been what they are really um talking about okay anyways that was um about the market improving which is awesome for us resellers it's really awesome for all of the um, fashion or clothing resellers, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> the um, clothing resellers. Uh, there's like several different clothing um, articles that I wanted to go over. So we'll just keep going. This I found interesting. Nike tops resale sites with over 1.1 million listings. I don't know if it's a good thing to sell Nike then. I mean, I guess it is because that means that they have a fast um, AP, ASP. But then again, you're competing against 1.1 million other uh, other um, sellers. Um, yeah is really really weird I know I'm just going down this I was trying to think uh, the study conducted by t-shirt brand chummy tees offers a glimpse into the resale trends and consumers preference in 2024 it highlights the differences in brand popularity between eBay and Depop reflecting the fragmented nature of the resale market and the very bright taste of its users so if you're gonna sell Nike Depop and eBay that's where you need to be yeah where was it oh here we go 
following Nike, uh, Ralph, oh, uh, did you, did they put it up there? Yeah, that was a part that I wanted to read. Uh, following Nike, Ralph Lauren, there's another brand to look out for, holds the second spot with nearly 1.03 million listings, predominantly on eBay, where it has more clothing items listed than any other brand. That, I believe. Ralph Lauren is almost everywhere. I've seen Ralph Lauren in Walmart and... I can always find Ralph Lauren at the thrift store. Uh, Levi's comes in third with over 646,000 listings, showing a stronger presence on eBay compared to Depop. I don't know. These are some good brands to look out for. Zara and Victoria's Secret complete the top five with Zara being the favorite among Gen Generation Z on Depop and Victoria's Secret showing a notable decline in popularity among younger consumers on the same platform. I didn't think that they were going down. I wonder why. Because don't, doesn't Victoria's Secret, they have that, is it love? No, pink. They have that pink edition, and that's like really popular with the um, new, newer age generations. I think some of the millennials still like the pink brand too. Um, here's some more: Adidas, J. Crew, Top Shop, H and M, and Free People are also among the top ten most listed brands with Gucci standing out at the most listed luxury label at 21st overall. Wow. You would think Dooney and Brokery, yeah, DMB would be up there. Josh Newman, founder of Chubby Tees, commented on the findings, noting the insight Insights provided into the labels that dominate online resale during a time when side hustles become increasingly common in response to rising living costs. The data underscores the shifting landscape of online resale, exactly what we talked about in the previous article, where mainstream and luxury brands alike be for consumers attended across different platforms. Oh, I just lost it. Each with its own demographic and stylist preference. This article is based on a press release statement summarizing the key findings without endorsing any claims. Okie dokie. That's amazing. So those are a bunch of different um, clothing labels or clothing that to look out for. Uh, another one to look out for, which I don't know if this is going to like help sales surge on eBay or if this is going to like make the sales come down, but I don't know. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But I thought this was interesting. Um, Dr. Martens laun launches recycled leather collection and resale platform. I thought this was really interesting. Uh, the recycled leather collection comes after Dr. Martens participated in Jen Phoenix's 18 million funding round last year. Other inve inventors, investors, in the round included tapestry and in motion ventures. Excuse me, I got the burps tonight. The investment arm of Jagger Land Rover. The Genex Appa line will feature recycled leather remakes of three Dr. Martin styles. So 
you will want to be on the lookout for these styles in thrift stores because um, you might get a pretty good price on eBay for them. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Prices in the collection range from 140 to 170 pounds or about 177 to 215 dollars at current exchange rates. It will be available on Dr. Martin's e-commerce site beginning Tuesday. Oh, so those are the ones you want to look for to sell back to them to recycle, right? Comment down below if you think that's what it means. I am not sure. <laughs> Uh, Jen Phoenix's tech breaks down waste leather to the fiber level and uses recycled water to rebuild it into recycled materials per the Genex Napia release. I think that's amazing because then there's going to be like no more waste in the landfields. Well, less waste in the landfields. It's going to be way better for the environment. <laughs> Founded in 20, 2007, Gen Phoenix calls itself the first recycled leather company at scale. Gen Phoenix previously partnered with Tapestry, owned Coach to launch Co Coach Tifa last year. Are they talking about like the Coach brand? Let me see. Yeah, that's awesome. Coach launches Coach Tifa brand forced, forced on circular fashion. That is cool. I didn't know Coach did that. Okay. Well, let's go back to Dr. Martin's. Uh, the sus sustainability cha challenges of today are complex, and circular business models are one of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to go past all that. At DMs, we have been taking steps forward in our journey towards circulatory and gen and GenX Napa is a great example of one of them. It demonstrates that waste is valuable resource and shows how we can think differently about our products into into the future that's exactly how people should be thinking or a lot of these companies should be thinking quit throwing stuff away repurpose it reuse it do something with it not just throw it in the landfill i mean we don't want to become wally -E, you know we all end up in space and all we're doing is just eating and floating there in chairs <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> meanwhile, Dr. Martin's resale platform, ReWare, launched online last week using tech from Archive. The platform allows customers to shop from used boots, shoes, and bags, which are repaired and restored before being made available for online, per an email to Fashion Dive. See, that's why I'm like, I don't know if this is going to hurt us resellers or if this is going to be better. Uh, customers can exchange their worn Dr. Martin's footwear and bags for a $20 discount voucher that can be used toward a new pair of storefronts. New pair, towards a new pair at storefronts in Las, Vegas, Los Angeles in Portland, Oregon. That is awesome. Because then they're like, people aren't just like throwing them away. Hey, I'll go get me a $20 discount. You never know. $20 is $20. Anymore, he's like, these days it is. Um, online trade in options aren't available yet, but at Reware websites says, stay tuned, there's more to come. Circular textile company Terrace Solutions will handle the repairs and restoration of items sold on the platform. Terrace has partnered with several other fashion companies, including New Balance, Ralph Lauren, 
um, Elaine Fisher in Canada Goose. That's cool. Simply, similarly, tech platform archives host resale platforms for New Balance, Olda Johnson, and Mage. Okay. I don't know them. Uh, ba 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 ba. We'll go through all of that. Skip all that. Dr. Martin's other sustainability goals include reaching net zero e emissions across the value chain by 2040 and having all the natural materials used in its product sourced from regenerative agriculture during the same period. That is awesome. I love that. In the most recent earnings statements in January, the company reported a 21% decrease in revenue to 267.1 million pounds. The company attributes decrease in its wholesale at DTC channels to weak performances in the US. See, that's where I'm like, I don't know. Maybe they're weak performances in the US because they sell all their stuff to Walmart. I don't know. Just thought. Thank you everybody for coming and watching my episode. I'm hoping to do this more frequently in the future. If you I like this series or if you want to see certain topics, just let me know down in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, keep your eye out for more information. I'm going to try and be putting out more and more videos like this uh, in the future. Thanks for coming. Bye.